But uh, let's pull up ICICI Bank. The uh, stock had already dropped almost 3.5% on Friday before the numbers could come out and after the numbers came in. And today is the first rating of trade and uh, it's down about 2%. Siddharth Porohit, uh, he's, uh, he tracks banks at Angel Broking, joins us right now. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Porohit. You know, if I look at ICICI Bank, on the face of it, the numbers are not that bad if I take out the, uh, just don't look at the net interest income, which has gone down. PAT is better. It's uh, um, the, uh, the gross NPA's number is better than what was expected. Net NPA number was better than ex expected. But the fine print is still worrying, right? Right. Uh, as you said, like, you know, the bottom line number has been the more or less what the street was expecting. Uh, but if you look at the some details, then uh, you can see that uh, the other income has been a little higher than what uh, street was expecting, including uh, us. Uh, because partly you can say that uh, that could be added by your uh, uh, non-core, uh, non-fees income. And uh, another component which has played a uh, role is your uh, provisions. Provisions has been little lower than what we thought. Mm -hmm. Partly because, uh, the, as you know, that... Uh, uh, the bank had created a one-time provision of 3600 crores in the Q4 result. Yeah. Uh, so uh, almost 800 crores of provisions has been uh, taken from that. Mm -hmm. So effectively, if you add it up, then the credit cost, uh, like, you know, if you add the 2500 crores reported provisions and that 800 crores, then it is on a higher side. Mm -hmm. So combining these two facts, uh, then your bottom line looks uh, online. But uh, basically, if you adjust this, then it is little uh, disappointing. But uh, now, good part is that uh, if you talk about the asset quality, mm -hmm. uh, then a uh, large part of the slippages has come from the uh, watch list. Mm -hmm. As you know that uh, the company had uh, given a watch list up close yeah. to 44,000 crores and uh, the stress was likely to come from that. Mm -hmm. So, large part of the stress has come uh, from that itself. Almost 55% of slippages has come uh, from that uh, uh, accounts itself. So, that is a point of, uh, like, you know, comfort. But uh, let me clar clarify one more thing that other than the watch list also there has been some slippages like you know almost uh, 1300 odd crore from the uh, restructured book mm -hmm. and the balance has come from the non uh, watch list and non restructure so there is a little point of worry for me that you know if uh, this run rate of slippages come from the non watch list and non restructured then there could be some worry so, so that is I, one uh, point. The sales to ARCs of uh, of those uh, NPAs, uh, I think the gross uh, book value amount comes to about 53, 50 odd crore. If I look at the net book value amount of the sales to ARCs, that comes to about 23, 30 crore. And now, uh, that would have made a big difference to the gross NPA number and the net NPA number, right? Right. In fact, if you adjust those uh, kind of, you know, sell to ARC, like now, then, then in that case, had it not been the, the like you know sell to ERC, then the GNP number would have really spiked up. But uh, if they are able to sell to ERC in a big tank, also nothing wrong about it because yeah. that too, that will be the kind of you know one of the solutions for the stress asset going ahead as as we know because recovery and uh, upgradation takes time. So if a uh, bank is able to sell some of the probable uh, entities which can, I mean, which ARCs feel that can be uh, recovered at a later stage will find buyers. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think anything wrong about it, but certainly uh, the gross NPA number would have looked much higher had no, not the, been there. I was calculating the gross NPA number and uh, I know it's uh, difficult to do that because the loan book size also changes and everything changes accordingly, but it it's anywhere between a 7 to 80, 80 basis, 70 to 80 basis points difference, right? Yeah, could be, yeah, mm -hmm. almost. And uh, see, but one, uh, like, you know, uh, let me tell you one part that uh, within the uh, uh, asset quality, if we closely analyze what uh, management had been saying is that, you know, uh, that possibly large part of the slippages should come from the watch list. But yeah. even there has been some slippages from the retail accounts also, which is the normal course of business. It should be like, you know, you should see it as a normal course of business. Mm -hmm. But if that fix up, because now the bank is banking more on the retail loans rather than corporate. So if the retail growth, uh, like, you know, is driven very aggressively, there could mm -hmm. be some deterioration. Yeah. We have not seen major, uh, like, you know, largely any deterioration over there. Mm -hmm. But there is one point of worry. So now mm -hmm. bank will have to kind of, you know, balance it, not only depend on the retail uh, side for its growth. Mm -hmm. Because if you 
uh, like you know, look at retail, it has grown by 22 percent retail portfolio, mm. but overall it has grown by only 12 percent the loan book. Mm. So they are largely depending on the retail. So now that is the kind of you know, point of worry. Again, mm. at a point of time, they will have to start uh, exploring again on the upward side for uh, overall growth mm. uh, to maintain the cost to income ratio. Mm. So there is one point over there. So sustainability of the retail growth is a big question that you know. Uh, retail can go. I know. I, I have no doubt that about twenty percent is fairly assumed. But yeah. with that, only is not going to help the bank in terms of you know balance sheet growth. Mm -hmm. That is a big point of worry for me. Uh, you know, uh, let me just go back to that uh, asset sale to ARCs, and uh, I was reading somewhere that uh, estimated uh, book value, uh, estimated book value of those sales is at about seventy percent discount. Now I know you are saying that it's a good thing to sell rather than wait and upgrade later on or try to do recovery and sit with those assets but that means that you are actually losing 70% of whatever was on the uh, uh, on the asset side yeah if you see the total uh, like you know haircut on ERC always has been higher for any banks which has sold uh, like you know the NP to uh, ERC so that has been the trend mm -hmm. but uh, what happens that uh, if you are holding on to those NPA and as a, like, you know, because of aging problem, you again have to take higher provisions. Mm. And end of the day, if you're not able to do it on time, you simply write it out. Yeah. So, I mean, if those assets where uh, the bank feels that, you know, at least it's a better deal to sell to ERC, then I don't think anything wrong about it uh, because at least uh, there have is a realizable value. you heard anything from the value. management, uh, uh, you know, in the, uh, after the numbers, where those assets were, where have they been sold? They have a lot of uh, stress and steel, right? Yeah, it is from certain steel accounts, but it has been uh, more than that also. There has been other accounts also, but it has been uh, like, you know, it has been uh, in public domain that there has been one uh, large steel account also. Other than that, there has been some mid-size accounts also. So it's a uh, packet of, uh, like, you know, ARC which has been sold up. So, I mean, I think going ahead, sell to ARC could be one of the strategy for the bank to reduce the overall stress on the book. Now, uh, one of the positives there, Siddharth, that we pointed out was the uh, growth in CASA, which uh, was about 18%, which is a low-cost fund for the bank. But uh, if I look at the uh, reported names and the core names, uh, reported names, I think, are down by about 21 basis points. Uh, core name down by about 14 net interest margins for, uh, sorry for using the jargon, uh, uh, down by about 14 basis points. And uh, last quarter, the guidance was from the management that it will drop by about 20 basis points over the fiscal. In the first quarter itself to achieve that drop, uh, is that a cause for worry or that's factored in? See, largely factored in, I would say, because when you... Uh, do a lot of recognition in terms of NPA, then interest reversal has to be there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, NIMS will be under pressure and even during this quarter also management has said that NIMS will be under pressure for more quarters to come. And uh, as we know that, like, you know, uh, whatever the trend is that, you know, at least similar run rate of slippages you might see for at least one or two quarters more going ahead. So, again, there will be reversal of interest. So the NIMS has to be under pressure and that is a kind of, you know, factored in, I would say. What is not factored in, I would say, is that, you know, possibly higher slippages from the non-watch list and thereby further contraction in NIMS. So if, I mean, uh, it uh, drops uh, further 20 basis from, from here, then there could be a point of worry. But as, of, as long as they are able to maintain uh, similar or maybe 10 basis point here and there, then I think it's not a point of worry. So, I mean... It is a known fact to the investor community as of now. So, uh, are you changing your uh, valuation model for ICICI Bank after Q1? Uh, we had largely uh, kind of you know, factored in a very low growth uh, for FI uh, 17 itself because of higher provisioning, and uh, we are sticking to that because uh, as far as the bottom line number is concerned, they have more or less delivered, and they will continue to. Uh, report similar numbers. The reason being, they have, uh, as I told you earlier, that you know they have created a contingency provision, mm -hmm. wherein they will utilize that provisions against any uh, incremental slippages over and above what the management has, uh, like you know, thought about it. So probably they will maintain the similar numbers, but uh, other income could uh, support to some extent in the coming quarter also, if at all a recovery and upgradation happens, which can flow into other income. But if you talk about absolute growth, then FI17 will be a kind of, you know, marginal degrowth over FI16. So I mean, we are estimating around 2-3% uh, of... Yeah. 
I mean, I'm Sorry? looking at I'm I'm looking at some brokerages actually having put a uh, brought it down to hold from buy. Some have actually go, uh, have cut uh, the earnings estimates marginally. What is your call? See, uh, we are kind of you know, just uh, cutting it down by 2-3 percent only in terms of earnings because we had already a, a lower estimate for FI 17. But uh, when you talk about call on the stock, we had an accumulated rating uh, post Q4 result and uh, with a target price of 254. So we are not uh, revising it uh, like you know um, materially upward right now. Mm. We'll possibly uh, like you know get into the stock met maybe on a corrections because. Uh, there is no. Uh, so, if someone's holding it right now, should they hold it because it's above your target price, or should they sell and buy it back at lower uh, levels? Holding can definitely hold on because uh, okay. the, uh, the negative fact, uh, things are already factored in. What I am only banking on is that in case what management has been saying is that the uh, non watch list accounts can be upgraded. So, if there is more upgradation happens, then possibly your credit cost. Uh, like, you know, may not be very high towards the end of the year because uh, maybe next quarter it will be high even Q3. But Q4, uh, towards end of Q4, maybe you will see that, you know, because as, as the trend has been that even PSU banks have been very aggressive on the recovery and upgradation front. So I don't think that uh, anything, you know, wrong with ICC bank that they will not be able to recover. So far it has been not been up to the mark, but there is a case that, you know, it can happen. So we are still, uh, from that point of view, we are uh, like, you know, having it, a, we are giving it a benefit of doubt that, you know, the earnings may not deteriorate sharply from what we are estimating. So I think somebody who is holding on can continue to hold, but uh, fresh entry should be considered only on, uh, like, you know, declines. That is what our strategy would be. Okay, that is uh, the, uh, that's the call from Angel Broking. Uh, Sadat Purohit there. Thank you so much. Uh, the call from Angel Broking is whole. Let's just quickly pull up uh, the stocks of Aisha Motors and Maruti.